I ran away from home and dug a hole for China. But halfway there, the rocks were already oven hot. And as my shovel melted, I thought, this isn't China. This is hell. I think I was only one stone away because I could already hear sulfuric gasps and saxophone jazz hissing through the obsidian cracks. God damn, they play hot shit in hell. Did you like my cursing? I learned from my dad. He said a curse is worth a thousand words and he would load them up and crash them like trucks on the highway, forcing conversation to a standstill for days in either direction. He used up all the words in the house. All the words, but worse, all the rope which is why I'm staring up my tunnel to the blue sky patch above my backyard with no way to reach it except to scream up a goodbye. When it echoed away, I dug my fingers into the hottest cracks and pulled. Hell was what I expected from the stories, wicked but in a way that reminded me of school. It was like the smoking doors during lunch break or the bars near the train station where the men got drunk waiting for news. I knew Hitler from the History Channel, and I watched him get a pink belly from Stalin, and after ten minutes they switched. Maybe the magic of hell is that it seemed longer for them, or maybe the real torture is that they have to do it all the time. I saw the bad men from the news, the bad women from the hospital. I saw the parents of my bullies and the teachers of my teachers. They were swimming laps in lakes of fire, building pyramids for Halloween devils. They were pushing stones up hills. I saw Dad leashed by his neck to an iron cactus while rats and weasels scratched and bit at his feet. Just where the bishop said he'd be when I heard him, pot-bellied without his robes, talking about suicides with his squash partner at the Y. Dad would kick a rat into a group of others to get them to fight, to buy himself some peace. And this must have taken all his concentration because I was already beside him when he noticed me. I asked him if he knew me. He said yes. I asked him how he was. He said, fine. I gestured at the rats. He said, you get used to it. He apologized for being short with me. He said he was just embarrassed I found him here, like it was a casino or a gutter. Then he asked why I was here. I explained about the tunnel and how he used up all the rope. Oh, he said, well, it's all here. Take it back. And he started pulling in the free end of his tether, which stretched for miles behind him. I grabbed it and left the way I came. The rope kept slipping into my hands like a magician's scarf. It was hemp, then chain, then snakes and extension cords. It was a jump rope and jumper cables. It was the lace cloth from grandma's table. It was yo-yo strings and stereo wire. And by the time I reached the top, it was spider silk. At my front door, it was invisible. So I tied it around my finger for safekeeping. The hole filled in with a sputtery steam the next time it rained. But I can always tug on my rope any time I need to remember the depth of Dad's hell, and it's just like a canker sore or a puzzle with a missing piece. I can't just not do it. I can't just leave it alone.